all right. You just take it easy. Take it easy. Lenny can't talk. Charlie, why don't we uh, let Billy have a few minutes with his dad alone? Talking back, then? I don't know, Charlie. It's hard to say. I reckon it was them rawhide that said. Charlie, you know better than that. If it was a rawhide, that'd have taken everything. I sure wouldn't have missed this. That's for sure. I think what'd have happened to the little boy if he hadn't been out getting firewood, too. Yeah. Somebody must have really hated his father. They're after something. It's too bad that he can't write. It sure is. After this for him and get on back to the train. I'll get the boy. Yeah. All right, Billy, take it easy. You got nothing to be afraid of. Do you understand that? And I want you to remember, I'm your friend. All right? Wagons look alike to me. If this turns out to be one of your drunken yarns, I'll hang you by your ears. Well, honest, Frank, honest. I, I told it to you just like I heard the young lieutenant say it, honest. And where's the wagon? That's the fourth one we've hit in two weeks and nothing. Double zero, Slater. Uh, well, we could have, we, we could have. Look, there, there, there can be other trails from Tuscosa to the Humboldt Crossing. I, I mean, we could have... He's right, Frank. There's no guarantee it joined that train down there. Why, why sure. It could be behind us. Driving along nice and lonely. Yeah, just, just waiting for Mr. Frank Morgan to come along, huh? Yeah. Well, let's not keep it waiting. No, no, because that wouldn't be gentlemanly, huh? Who uh, said I was a gentleman, huh? <laughs> Billy, you said there were three of these men. Do you remember anything else? I mean, did you see their faces? Do you think you could recognize them if you saw them again? Billy, did your father have to leave home? I mean, was he running away from something or anybody? I'm sorry, I hate to keep asking you questions like this, but when I see the sheriff, I've got to know everything I can. What do you say you have some of Charlie's too, huh? He says it'll cure anything in the world. Should we make him prove it? Well... Change your mind, Billy. I'll have him keep it warm. All right? Ain't he going to eat? No. Nope. Well, he ain't had nothing all day. Did you tell him my stew could help him a little? You better keep it warm, Charlie. Yes, sir. What'd you find out? Not very much. There were three outlaws, but one did all the talking. He doesn't think his father was in trouble, and he doesn't know what they were after. Oh, that doesn't tell us anything. It does. Well, what about the boy? Well, I think he ought to come with us. He's beginning to feel that, that we're his friend, and I think that's very important. I think you're right. I think he should ride on the wagon with me, too. On account, I've had a lot of experience raising boys. What experience? Well, I raised myself, didn't I? You know, that's a good idea, Charlie. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, I'm going to go talk to the people. The main thing is that we shouldn't ask any questions. We should just sort of let him kind of get over it if we can. You're right, you're right. Phrase yourself, huh? Well, I did, didn't I? Proud of it, too. Sir, Billy, you've never seen so many Indians in your life. There was Indians to the right of us, to the left. There was all around us. Old Hawk sent me out there and finally I just raised up a gun. Bang! Well, it was there anyway. See what I see? Yeah, but I don't believe it. Maybe he's lost. Ah, how do you do, gentlemen? Splendid day, isn't it? A bit warm, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. I am uh, Daniel Benker, DM. The DM stands for a doctor of musicology. I'm uh, president, vice president, and sole worker of my company, which designs and manufactures musical instruments. I see. Where are you from? By birth and inclination, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But the uh, necessity of business has recently made me a traveler. Pretty rugged country to be traveling alone in. The, oh, well, I have a very valuable cargo of instruments here, which I've contracted to deliver to San Francisco, and uh, I'm waiting here for Mr. Hale's wagon train. You're waiting for us? Oh! One of you two gentlemen is uh, Mr. Um, McCullough? That's right, that's me. This is Bill Hawks. You do? How are you? Where did you see Hale? In Logan. How did you get here before we did? Well, I was... Uh, Stranded in Logan, wondering how one navigates the formidable desert and mountains, and I overheard Mr. Hale trying to buy beef for his train. That doesn't explain how you got here ahead of us. Oh, well, I... Uh, I explained to Mr. Hale how anxious I was to reach San Francisco as soon as possible, and he told me about the shortcut across the mountains. It's no wonder that your wagon's such a wreck. It's no wonder you got here at all. Yes, Mr. Hale warned me that might be the case, but... Uh, here I am. And here you are. Fate. Am I welcome? Yeah, I guess you're welcome, all right. But you'll have to change this cargo, move it to another wagon. Oh, no, no. Please, sir. I mean, couldn't, couldn't you fix it? I no. I'll pay for everything. No, I think that'd take us too long. It took me almost two weeks to pack these instruments perfectly. I'm afraid, well, they're very delicate. To try and repack them would take days. Well, I guess we can find you another wheel. At least we'll look for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, Mr. Hale told me that I could meet no finer or friendlier group of people. He did not exaggerate, Mr. McCullough. Well, you don't want to believe everything you hear. Not out here. <laughs> we'll see you later. Folks, this is Dr. Daniel Denker. These are some of the people you'll be traveling with, Doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely honored to meet you. <laughs> oh, I know I look a bit strange to you, but after a few days when we have traveled together, perhaps you will consider me a friend. And among friends, of course, there can be no strangeness. Well, well, well. One pretty girl is good. Two pretty girls. That's unbelievable. Now, if I tell you my name, will you tell me yours? You're Dr. Denker, and I won't take any medicine. Oh, but you won't have to. You see, I'm a doctor of music. Does music get sick? Only when I play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you do? I'm just in time for some candy. Candy? What kind? 
Let me see. Do that. <laughs> what kind is it? Peppermint. Ah, <laughs> that's right. Would you like some? Thank you. Gee, how about me, sir? Thank you. You, of course, you and you, and for you, and even for you. Now watch <laughs> closely. Nothing. And nothing. Right? But. Flugel, woogel, wargily woo. And out comes. Madam, would you mind holding out your apron? Daddy used to be funny when he used to make us laugh. Shut your mouth, Laurie. Well, now, daddies can't be funny all the time, you know. They have to worry about their pretty little girls. Well, what have we here? That's Billy. Well, come on, hurry up. The candy will all be gone. What's the matter? Don't you like candy? He was scared, Doctor. He won't talk. No, wait. Billy, it doesn't matter. Many of us don't care for candy. And, uh, Billy, there are many ways of speaking. There is, for instance, the language of music. It's quite beautiful and quite simple, too. It's as easy as talking. Look, it's first in here. You want it to come out, to say something for you. So... Take a deep breath, and out it comes, like this. Here, you try it. Not sure, Doctor. We think that he saw his father die. Die? Saw his father murdered, you mean? out there like there ain't no suffering in the world. We know we're different, don't we, boy? You want to talk again, don't you? But then you listen to me. You get vengeance in your heart for the men who killed your paw. See this eye? My lake. Wood, that's what it is. Wood. I was in the battle, Shiloh. There's one man who did it to me. gun. Reached loader and he gave it to the north. We didn't know nothing about him and we charged those Yankees. Oh, they started shooting so fast. So fast they could have sounded like dry wheat. I was murdered, boy. Because that man should have sold those guns to both sides or no sides at all. But when he sold them only to the north, he knew what would happen. He knew. I hate that man. That's why I didn't die. 
You don't have to know your pa's killer any more than I did. Just know in your heart what you would do if you did know him. That would push the fear out of your thoughts. Cry out for vengeance, boy! Beaufort, I want you to keep away from this boy. Why? Why, I'm giving him reason to talk. You got reason to talk now, ain't you, boy? Your inventions aren't good reasons for anything, Billy. They fill a man so full of hate he can't laugh anymore. Is that what you want? You think that's what your father wants? I want you to keep away from him, Bullfart. As long as we're on the train, you stay away from him. I won't tell you again. Remember what I said, Billy. say he ain't no music man. Ed, you got no reason to distrust Dr. Denker. Why, he's making this trip a good time. Did you see him teaching the kids to play their music things? I don't trust nobody who don't do nothing but laugh and play all day long. Maybe that's because you forgot how to do those things, Ed. I ain't got a reason to laugh, Emma. Now, you listen to me. He's been here four days now, and every day wearing different clothes. Why, they're mules, the finest mules I've ever seen. They cost a lot of money, George. Musicians don't make a lot of money. Why, every fiddler in my town was always looking to borrow. And Dr. Denke ain't like a fiddler, Ed. All right, all right. But ever since he got here, my leg's been pounding something awful. And my leg ain't never been wrong yet. He ain't forgot what Laura said to Dr. Denker that first day. That's the rankle in him. Yeah, California's a long way from his hate, Emma. Ed's hate is only as far away as himself. Good evening. Good oh, evening, Frank. Excuse me, but I was wondering if you people have seen Billy. I haven't. Maybe he's watching the other children play. No, I'm afraid not. Well, now, uh, Laura told me she saw him today when Dr. Denker was teaching her to play the harmonica. Well, that's good news. I didn't know that. If anybody can make that boy social again, it's Dr. Denker. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, thanks. All right, night. Good evening, Master Latham. No, 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 Billy, please, wait. I must ask you a favor. You see, I have a very difficult decision to make. And since you've been watching our little orchestra practice every day, I thought you would be the best person to help me. You see, I have to decide 
whether Joey should play the harmonica or the cymbal. Well, he doesn't play either one too well, but uh, he is a little better on the cymbal. Well, harmonica is a difficult instrument. Not just anybody can play it. Anyway, what should I do about Joey? Let him play the harmonica or the cymbal? Hmm? Harmonica or cymbal? I had a feeling you would say that. It hurts your ears when he plays the harmonica. Well, I don't want to take up your time. I know you like to be alone, but uh, if I could get somebody to play the harmonica, to learn to play it, then I would feel a little easier in my mind about Joey playing the cymbal. Hmm? Well, now, who could... Uh... Perhaps it's too much to ask. I'll ask anyway. Billy, could you learn to play the harmonica? Here. You can have this one if you like. difficult. I quite understand. Well, I mustn't take a, any more of your time. You have been very kind and very helpful. Thank you. Good night. good? I don't know, Mr. McCullough. I don't know. I understand what you're trying to do for that boy. And well, I want you to know that it's appreciated. Not only for the boy, Mr. McCullough. For myself, too. To love children is to love living. I've seen too much of death already. Orchestra is assembled, I see. Yes, but I want to play all by myself this time. What? A soloist already, hmm? Well, we shall see. At the moment, we'll all play together, please. Ladies and gentlemen, be seated. We shall now play Beethoven's Tenth Symphony. Ready? <laughs> ah, join us, Mr. Wooster. Not everybody can do that. <laughs> Good. Why don't you join us, Mr. Worcester? Oh, thank you, Doctor. That'd look kind of silly, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, the Bible says, be ye as little children, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh, it does, don't it? <laughs> you won't believe this, Doctor, but I play a real good triangle, you know. Oh, I believe it. I believe it, Mr. Worcester. One time my folks talked about me taking up triangle playing for a living. Oh, is that a fact? Yes, sir. <laughs> now then. Triangle. Well, I'll be. Uh, thank you, Doctor. You'll never regret this. Uh -uh. Sorry, sorry. Excuse me, son. <coughs> Can you really play that good? Well, I was the best triangle player in my hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to practice, not to talk. Yes, sir. Now then, a symphonic orchestra depends on precision. 
Mr. Wooster. Yes, sir. You will wait for my cue. Oh, yes. Ready? To me, like when a doctor's physician that needs a shave. Oh, you know, Flint, Chris, give a month's pay to see this. Hey, look. Yes, good evening, Master Latham. What can I do for you? Yes, my boy. Come on, boy, do it. I'm afraid I don't understand. Our Monica. Ever since he started talking again, he don't see fit to ride with me no more. And that's the way I like it, too. Sounds great. Oh, you'll be a real virtuoso. How you feeling, Billy? No, no. Only horses nod. I'm fine. Still a little tight, but uh, we're getting better. Huh, Billy? Better all the time. Come on. Scales. Charlie, don't you think you practiced that thing long enough? Too long, if you ask me. But nobody asked you. The doctor says you can't practice enough. Practice makes perfect, and that's what I'm going to be. Why, you can't cook with a triangle. Yeah, and maybe I'm not going to cook too long for you two ingrates. How do you like that? Charlie, you wouldn't do a thing like that to us, would you? <clears throat> you think you're smart, don't you? Well, the doctor tells me that I have a hidden talent. I knew it all the time myself, too. That's right. Your talent is so deeply hidden, you can't even find it. Well, he don't think that way. He told me before we get to San Francisco, I'll be thinking something else, too. Like what? I don't know, but I was thinking about a piney. And I don't mean one of them honky-tonk pianos you play in a saloon, either. I mean something like a Beethoven's Second Symphony. Well, we ought to be thankful that the doc doesn't have any pianos with him. Who says he ain't? I say it. How do you know? Well, I happened to see the inside of his wagon before we put that tarp on it. And there was no piano? No. Everything was all covered and tied down. Well, then you don't know, do you? I know that there was nothing big enough in there to be a piano. It's all right, Charlie. You can always go play with your triangle. <laughs> size of pianos. Rifles. All right, you people, we've got a lot to find out, so I wish you'd be quiet and listen. Hawks, take care of Mr. Beaufort's rifle. Dr. Denker, you're authorized to carry ten cases of rifles. Why hide it? Because maybe he's carrying 20 cases of rifles in that wagon. He can't be trusted. Can anybody else see that but me? Beaufort, will you keep your personal feelings out of this? You search that wagon, I say. Please. Mr. McCullough, there are only 10 cases, believe me. 
You ask for a reason why I'm hiding the rifles? That's right. Mr. Beaufort, and people like him, that's a reason. I never wanted to be a maker of rifles. I never... I just wanted to be a musician. Make people laugh, make them sing. I want to make them die. But the Denkers were never musicians, makers of machines, of guns, yes. Instead of a toy, a Denker child gets a tool. And all of a sudden, he's no longer a child. So you cross the country in a wagon loaded with rifles. That rifle helps protect you and your family. It helps keep off intruders, outlaws. It helps bring these trains across the plains. It gets you food. I am proud of that gun. I'm only desperately sorry it had to be used for war. I hate war. I don't want people to die. I want them to live. I never wanted to be Denker of the Eastern Rifle Company. Just Denker, doctor of music. That's why I sold the company. Then you're no longer in control of it. Uh, yes, when my father died two months ago, it became my decision. Well, when you feel as strong as you feel, then why are you carrying the rifle? I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to disclose that. He's hiding something. Can anybody but me see that he's hiding All something? All right, Beaufort. I'm sorry, Doctor. We'll have to check the wagon. Very well. There is something else in the wagon. I told you. I knew he couldn't be trusted. Oh, but will you keep your mouth shut? Please, you must understand. Sure, we understand. We understand you're a sneaking Yankee liar. Please, everybody! I am carrying something new. Something which cannot be entrusted to anyone. Something which in the right hands can be a wonderful thing. But in the wrong hands, well, be just horrible. The firm was... Contracted for a shipment by the army in San Francisco. There's nobody with enough technical knowledge to carry the stuff. We thought that the secret was well guarded, but I received word in Santa Fe that it had leaked out. See, Mr. McCullough, that was the reason why I was so desperate to join a wagon train. But well, what is it you're carrying? Dynamite. Dynamite? Dynamite! The most powerful explosive in the world! Explosive! Bill! No, 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 no! It is quite harmless. The special caps and fuses which have to be attached by an expert before it can explode at all. Have you any idea who found out what it was you were carrying? No. The men who killed my father were looking for something. They killed my father looking for your dynamite. No, Billy. That's right, Billy. That's right, Billy. He killed your paw. He killed your paw. Don't say such a thing. Do not say that to that boy, you... you vengeful man. You would put hate in that boy's heart. For your dynamite! Bill, Bill. The sand cabinet keeps the heat in a while. This one's still a mite warm at the bottom. I'd say it was burning just this noon. Then the train can't be more than 10, 12 miles ahead of us. 15, maybe. No more than that. Well, I hope we can cook up some coffee. I'm about dead. You'll be dead, all right, if we don't find that wagon. Better just see who it is. Come on. Well, I'll be. What are you doing out here alone, boy? I'm going to California. You'll never get there going in this direction. Hey, Morgan! Where'd you come from, boy? Hey, you come from that wagon train? Come on, boy! Hey, hey! <laughs> hey, a feisty little mate, ain't he, huh? You did it! You killed my pa! What did you do it for? We didn't have nothing. Dr. Dinker, he's the one with the guns and the dynamite. Who's got it? What did you do it for? We didn't have nothing. Stop it, Alan. Why did you kill him? Your target shot near Cray Springs. Well, your pa should have answered some questions like I want you to. You understand? Now, you'll be a 
good boy, and we'll take you to California with us. And I'll give you more money than you can earn in your whole life. How's that, huh? Is this a uh, tanker with a train now? How do you know he's got the dynamite? He told us. Well, this calls for a drink. We're 15 miles from stuff that's going to make us the richest men in this country. We're going to be blasting open banks from here to California. And all you worry about is a swig of cheap whiskey. Come on, boy. Understand it. I you just... go get Mr. McCullough. Quick. Lynn? Lori, wake up. Was it still dark when you woke up? Uh-huh. But Billy was sleeping. I saw him. You sure of that? Took a horse, all right, Flint. We'll search for him. With a nose like mine, I'll smell him out in no time. We'll backtrack and catch up with you later. Yeah. Fine. All right, you kids run back and see your mother, but if you think of anything else, you'll be sure and let me know. Huh? Please, Mr. McCullough. I would like to do something. Ain't you satisfied with what you've done already? Take your guns and dynamite and get out. You'd better go, Dr. Denka. I hope you people are finished because I've heard enough of this talk. You sound like a bunch of executioners. He's the executioner. He's to blame for all this trouble. Mr. Beaufort, if your crop fails, do you blame the man who made the plow? Well, uh... And if you prick your finger when you're sewing, do you blame the needle maker? Any evil that exists in a gun exists because of the man who uses it. Not the man who made it. I hope that's enough of this talk. We've got a boy to find. <laughs> I'm looking for Mr. McCullough. That's me. What can I do for you? I'm a trader, Mr. McCullough. This is a wagon train, not a trading post. That's funny. I was told it was. I don't know who told you that, but it's wrong information. It was a little boy. Where is he? Well, where is he? Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. We're taking him to California, that is, unless we can trade. Then I'll do my best to send him back here. You harm that boy, and I'll follow you and kill you, believe me. None of that, McCullough. Or our trading days are over. No, no, wait. Stop this playing. It's my wagon you want. You, Denker? Yes, yeah. Denker. I have the guns, the dynamite. You bring the boy back, and I will give you the wagon. You come too, Denker. You see, I know there are tricks to using that stuff. Very well. I will go along. I will teach you. You know what you're saying, Denker? You said yourself what had happened if that stuff fell in the wrong hands. You let me handle The it. kid, McCullough, the kid! My friends will take him to California with him. Stop wasting time! It is I you talk to of trading, not to Mr. McCullough. You're right. There's a rock formation on a flat about a mile back. The boy comes back to the train when you get there. Agreed. You're a smart trader, Doc. Be a quick one. Giving him the dynamite doesn't guarantee you get Billy back. I said agreed. You can't bargain with scum like this. Now listen to me. Listen to what? There is no other way. I didn't make this situation. Ask them who's to blame for this danger. Is it their own bitterness? Their hatred? Is it the self-pity in their own hearts? No, it's Denker. So? It is Denker who has the dynamite, and it is Denker who decides. I have decided. You have a bargain, mister. Flint, maybe I can talk him into letting us hide in the wagon. 
He doesn't want to see anybody, let alone talk to him. Well, him and me's got something in common, you know. We're both musicians. That's right, Charlie. Yeah. Try it our own way, Bill. As soon as he's out of sight, we'll go out behind that rock formation. The main thing we have to do is just come in behind him before we hit him. All right, let's go. Take it. Still can't see why I can't go along. Three's bound to be better than two. care of myself, all right. Why don't you just leave me alone? So? You found your tongue again only to spit out hate. Seems I made a poor bargain. Got it. Both of you. Glad you checked the wagon. But it's all there. I gave my word. Sure, Doc. I believe you. must leave. I promised him he'd be back at the train in an hour. I'm not going back. I'm going to California with Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan? I'm not a stupid kid. All you're waiting for is a chance to do me in. Not that I blame you, understand? That's not so, Mr. Morgan. These men and I do not have time to waste with you. Now get out. Go on, get back to the other Denka haters. Come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. We are not here to wait. You only delivered half the bargain. Three boxes, that is the whole shipment. It's no good to us until you show us how to use it. Both of you, on the wagon. But the boy does not have to be here no, in... On the wagon. should be very proud of yourselves. You know, trying to take advantage of a nice man like Dr. Denker. Huh. Well, you wanted to blow things up and you did. So you ain't got no complaint coming. None of whatsoever. Hm. Just try to get a bandaging job like this down in that jail of Tahoe's where you're going. Hm. You sure you ain't hurt bad, Mr. McCullough? No, not bad, but Lily won't be conducting this orchestra for a while. 
Maybe I could make him up some broth. That's a good idea if it's not too much trouble. Ain't no trouble at all. Come along, Emma. Emma makes fine broth, Dr. Denker. You know, I think I will teach Mr. Beaufort to play the concertina. What about me? We'll have a long time for that, you and I. <laughs> 